And hello again, everybody. This is Harbinger. Excited to be back with you here to uh, show you the current progress of uh, my latest project. A couple of days ago, I posted on Reddit and here on YouTube that I was going to uh, try to make a working Pong game. I'm sure there were several people that thought I was full of shit um, because it's uh, it, it's it's a pretty crazy idea, but. I have the first part of it done, uh, basically a proof of concept for the entire thing because of the way the uh, entire system is going to work. As you can see, it is a long, long way away from being completed. Um, all that uh, does anything right now is this line of pixels and these two buttons which control the paddle for player one. As you can see. button and of course there is a bit of a delay. Luckily for anyone playing it, the ball is going to be moving just as slow as the paddles do. But we have up and down. And it moves the full width of the screen. Now as it's moving, um, you can see that occasionally the paddle blips completely out of uh, out of position from where it should be, like that. But it always comes to rest exactly where it is uh, supposed to end up. The reason that it does that, again, it's all uh, it all comes down to timing and having the proper number of inverters so that the signal signal ends up at the right place simultaneously. I'm not bothered to make sure that that happens yet. I'm going to get everything working and then I'm going to go back and smooth things out. But the fact that I can do that, um, and I was a little bit worried last night that I wasn't going to be able to get that to work because I gave up at about 3 o'clock in the morning on uh, the element of the project that makes that possible. What I had to do was make a counter that was capable of counting both up and down at the same time which is something that I had not, apparently had not been done before uh, because I wasn't able to find any information on it anywhere online to have a reference as to how to do it. I had to do it all from scratch. It took me a while to figure it out uh, and I kind of felt like an idiot for not seeing how to do it before um, considering all the crazy things that I did try before I came across the actual solution. But I got that working and that was the hardest part. Basically the ball is going to be controlled by something exactly like that except that instead of just controlling up and down there's going to be two separate counters, one to control the up and down of the ball movement and one to control the left and the right. So having done this part and got it working the rest of it is going to just be more the same on a larger scale wired in uh, to things that I've already done in the past. So definitely going to be a reality. It is only a matter of time and it is going to uh, be extremely slow, but that's all right. As long as it works, I'll be happy with it. Thankfully, the uh, players, player controls for uh, the first and second player are going to be completely independent of each other, so the lag in one should not affect the uh, performance of the other. Likewise with the ball, it's in a completely different uh, kind of isolated system. So, shouldn't uh, shouldn't have any problems there. Everything will move slowly, but it will move, and that is the important thing. So, going to give you a look at uh, what I've actually got built so far here in just a second, and I'm not going to go through too much of an explanation right now, but I'll give you a quick look at what I've actually built so far. These of course are the input lines running back into the system itself. This right here is the wiring for the left side of the screen. Just for that one line uh, that controls the player paddle. This is the slightly different than my other projects. Uh, this is the display driver set up to, depending on the position of the paddle up on the screen, 
turn on the three pixels that are connected to it. <coughs> Since it is three pixels wide or three pixels high and moving on a 10 by 10 grid, we only need to track the middle pixel. So we end up only having eight possible places that the uh, that the paddle can be. So we get away with a four, or excuse me, we get away with a three bit counter and decoder here. <clears throat> what you're looking at right in front of me here is the logic decoder. Um, line on the top, line on the bottom. These uh, determined based on the binary input which of the eight places up there on the board the paddle is in. Back here ignore all of that, that's from another project that I haven't gotten rid of yet. Back here the, uh, the display driver that turns things on. It's also going, it also extends the uh, redstone out here in the back, which is awesome that it does that and that uh, it goes back as far as it does because right in here is where the logic is going to go to determine based on which of these lines right here out of these eight are lit. Actually out of these ten are lit. That will uh, be where the logic for collision detection goes in to determine whether or not the ball hits or misses the paddle. Back there, that's all crap. That was when I was experimenting. Trying to get this thing to work. And this is the heart of the entire project. Jump up on here, give you a better look at it. This is a 3-bit counter. However, it is a 3-bit counter that is capable of simultaneously counting up and down. Something I wasn't able to find anywhere that, uh, that people had done yet, so I had to completely figure out how to logic that out from scratch. Not going to go into great detail about how that works. Uh, the important thing is that when you wire together a binary counter, you essentially, for each bit that's in the counter, you've got a toggle flip-flop. In a normal counter that would count up, the output of the lowest bit goes into the input of the uh, next successively higher bit. And to count up, that input is inverted between the two. To count down, you don't invert the input in between. So what I needed to do was make a system that based on which button was pressed, it would know whether or not it needed to invert the input and uh, therefore know whether or not it was counting up or down. Other than that, we just wire that here into the display driver and the decoder and everything updates properly depending on which of those two buttons are pressed. All of this on top here is because there is an inherent delay within the toggle flip-flops that is basically equivalent to the delay in four not gates or four inverters, basically two repeaters. So big thing is that the signal from the button, which not only trips the uh, trips the counter to start doing its thing, that signal from uh, that signal from the button input also is what tells it which of the gates it goes through to determine whether it's going to add or subtract a bit. We need all of these repeaters right here because it's vital that the input pulse from the button reaches the reaches the logic gates at the exact same time that the signal from the previous uh, previous toggle reaches it. You've got a very small window right there, so I've got a bunch of extra repeaters and inverters in there just to slow down the signal from the button controlling the up or the down so that it keeps up with, or so that the uh, counter itself can keep up with it. It's where a lot of the delay in the movement comes from, 
but there was no way to avoid that. The only way, only way I could figure out to get that to work was uh, to make sure that the timing was perfect in there. So that was what was taking all the time there. Um, when I say that this is the heart of the project, I, I mean it. Not only does it control the paddles going up and down, it's going to control the ball moving up, down, left, and right. There will be counter exactly like this that controls the ball's movement on the x-axis since it'll only be moving on the middle eight pixels to the left and the right. We'll get away with the three-bit counter again. The Y is going to uh, be controlled by one of these that is four bit and it will be you know it'll be able to move from uh, position one to position ten and once it hits ten it will trigger another toggle flip-flop that uh, controls the direction instead of it being button controlled it's going to have a separate bit to track which direction the ball is going to be moving in so it'll flip and flop once it reaches the boundaries of the screen and uh, continually be bouncing diagonally and then to actually animate that on the screen both of those counters will have a clock will have a common clocked input so it uh, it'll do the job then on the display back here as I get lost in this thing that I can't get by. Then to determine which of the pixels is lit on the screen, there is going to be a massive set of 80, 8 by 10, uh, 82 input AND gates that will composite the X coordinate and the Y coordinate and make sure that the appropriate pixel for the ball's current position is lit. Then once it reaches the end, meaning that the uh, counter controlling the X is either at 0 or 7. That's when it'll do the check to see if it has hit one of these lines right here that is on, indicating that a paddle is lit. If it doesn't hit a paddle, of course play one of the players will score. If it does hit a paddle, it will toggle the direction on the X axis that the ball is moving, causing it to bounce back. So, next step is to copy all of that over here, block by block and line by line, over to this side so that we have the controls for player two and so that I know exactly how much room here in the middle I have to do the rest of it. I'm going to end up having to space this up, dig down deep a bit, extend things out, and then get rid of this thing of course. Actually, it's probably good that that's there because I'll need one of the counters to go up on top of there. But, and lined up somewhere back here will be the 3-bit counter on top of that or below it, not sure where, will be the 4-bit counter. And then there will be a massive twisty mess of uh, lines right here, wiring all of that together. But once that is done, there will just uh, need to be a couple of extra buttons put in for resets to control gameplay, and it will be finished. So, hope you're as excited as I am. I uh, just wanted to post this to give a uh, more detailed description of how it's going to work, show you that I have the paddle working, and that uh, getting the balls work, getting the ball moving is going to basically be the exact same thing, just twice as much work and prove to you guys and to myself that I'm not full of shit because I honestly wasn't uh, wasn't sure if I'd be able to get this to work or not after last night. But I did. So within uh, hopefully within a week this will be done and it'll be up for download for everybody to play around with and enjoy.